Hello again ladies and gents and welcome back once again to AMC's garage. Today we're going to be fitting even more shiny black hardware from SW Motec onto this shiny black piece of hardware from Yamaha. So grab yourself a cuppa and let's do something about protecting this from the next time I decide to throw the bike down the road. So if you've been keeping up with my videos of late, you'll have noticed there seems to be a bit of a theme in that I have managed to throw my bike down the road a couple of times. And in an effort to stop me scuffing this one up, the lovely folks over at SW Motec have kindly given me a set of engine bars to fit to my bike and give me a little bit of protection. Now prices obviously vary depending on brand and model of bike, but these particular bars for the Yamaha FZ1 will set you back about 130 euros. Now I know straight off the bat, some of you are screaming out, why do you want to put great big bars onto this lovely sleek naked bike. Don't SW Motec do nicer looking more minimal crash sliders or crash pads? Well the answer is yes but I've decided on bars for two reasons. One of them is I think you just get much more protection. If the bike goes over on its side you have three points of contact at which that weight is distributed rather than the one single point at which the frame slider is mounted. I'm not saying this is the case with the SW Motec ones but I've also heard stories about people dropping their bike and the frame slider just being ripped off or actually having so much force put on it that it bends the frame and ultimately ruins your bike anyway. So for me, protection wise, engine bars are the way forwards. Secondly, and this is something that hopefully you guys will benefit from as well, the first thing I noticed after I'd been riding this bike around for a couple of weeks is there are almost no good places to mount cameras. There's no visible frame bars, there's nothing sticking out. There's just, it's really difficult to stick a camera to this bike. And having these beauties, it's gonna give me a bunch of mountain positions for cameras. So that's a purely visual and luxury reason, but that's the second reason why I want bars over a crash pad. So let's get on and fit them. We're gonna be mounting them to this bolt point here and then using these bolts here onto which the side stand is also mounted. So I'm gonna start the back with the side stand bolts. Now before I start, the keen eyed among you will have noticed that there's no paddock stand anymore. Because I'm rocking the SW Motec center stand, which I fitted in another video, check the link up in the top right to see me fitting that to the bike. Yep, that is definitely done up. Oh yes, that's tight. Hopefully the other one isn't quite so Jeff capes on. Okay, so that's the side stand loosened off. We'll just stand that, oddly enough, at the side for a second. But before I go ahead and use these bolts, you also need to remove this very oily bolt here because it goes right the way through to the other side. And we're gonna replace it with this much longer bolt so that it pokes a bit further out and that provides another mounting point on the other side for the right hand crash bar. This is gonna be interesting because I somehow need to hold this nut still while I turn the bolt from the other side or Maybe if I'm lucky, I might be able to crack that nut off without moving the bolt if it holds itself still. Hey, look at that. Sometimes things do go my way. Although I've probably spoken too soon and jinxed it now. So now I'm seeing that this isn't gonna be quite as easy as hoped because I'm gonna need to take the sprocket guard off to get that bolt past it. Thread locked, so it'll have to be thread locked going back in. And this one is not quite so straightforward. The gear linkage is in the way of it. Brilliant work, Yamaha. Luckily, I've got a bull-headed Allen key, which fits in there nicely. So I can come at it at an angle and then use the old spanner trick to get the required leverage. Although, yep, bolt's too long anyway. I need to disconnect the gear linkage anyhow. This is turning into a real kettle of worms, isn't it? So, undo the pinch bolt. I can't slide that any further out because the frame's in the way. I still can't get this bolt out. So, plan C. Push that back on, tighten that back up, and then hopefully, if I pull this rubber gaiter off of the ball joint here, yep, just as I had hoped. Can move these hoses out of the way. Move the linkage out of the way. Try again with our bolt. There we go. Oh, what a faff. Oh, turns out there is another bolt in here. This might make things a little bit more straightforward. Oh, I've got a moth in my engine. Okay, even then, I still can't get that sprocket cover right out of the way. Right, I've decided I'm actually just gonna take the foot peg off, pull that right through the frame out of the way, take this completely off, and give it a clean, because that's, oh, that's the kind of stuff I have nightmares about. But before I do that, get this bolt out. Right, finally, success. As you can see, the new bolt is a fair bit longer than the old one. 
giving us enough space to whack this spacer over there and then mount the engine bar onto the end of it. I'm gonna quickly clean this off. We'll be back at this job in a split second. And just like that, that is considerably better than it was. Not quite like new, but there's no more gunge in there. So it's ready to go back on. Take our big long bolt. This is quite amazingly an M10 by 280. We need one washer that goes on there like that. And then we push our long bolt through this hole here all the way through. Now we could march straight ahead and bolt these two bolts here on. Once we've done that, we'll be able to get this one out. So let's take this engine bolt out as well. Oh, that is expectedly and reassuringly tight. And for the only case with this kit, we need to keep and reuse the original washer. And now I'm gonna opt for putting the sprocket cover back in now because I have a feeling that once the engine bar is bolted on here, we're gonna have a little bit of trouble getting to this bolt here. So I'd rather have that fixed up before we get too far. Oh, this is the most busily and faffily designed area of any bike I think I've ever seen. We get the hoses into the channel before you can push the sprocket cover into place. And all of it, naturally, is incredibly tight. Right, there we go. That is roughly in place. Plastic isn't fouling the chain at all. Let's screw that back in. Let's splash a thread lock. Same for this one. And then last, but by every means least, the potential problem child bolt here at the bottom. So now the sprocket guard's back in place. Let's get the engine bars on. So before I forget, and before there's no wriggle room once I've got these bolts on, this spacer needs to go over this hole here. Stay. Then we need the two black M10 Allen headed bolts. Get a washer on each. That goes through the holes on the engine bar. Then another washer to ensure that the bar itself goes around all of the gubbins attached to the side stand. And these two bolts go through the side stand itself. Put a little dab of thread lock into the threads there and then screw in our bolts. Being extremely careful not to cross-thread them as we are bolting directly into the aluminium frame. So any cross-threadage and subsequent breakage here could be potentially disastrous. Oh, hello. That's not ideal. I'm also really pleased to see, just like on the SW Motec Blaze pannier mounting points that I fitted recently, check the link up in the top right to see the installation video for those panniers. But just like these mounts, SW Motec have spec black bolts down here, as they were originally black bolts holding the stand on in the first place. Whereas up here, they've spec'd a silver bolt because the bolt that came out of there was silver. Just makes me think that they put some thought into whereabouts these bolts and things are going, rather than just thinking, well, it's the right size, doesn't matter, does it? It's a nice touch, SW Motec, I like it. These three bolts should all be tightened up, according to the Yamaha manual, to 55 newton meters of torque, which, let's be honest, even Magnus Magnuson wouldn't be able to achieve that with this rubbish little ratchet and its loose handle. But also, sadly, I still don't have an Allen key attachment for my torque wrench, so I'm just gonna have to do them FT, or as FT as a big Allen key will allow. Click. So oh, that is now on, and that's impressive. That is proper solid. Even though the other side still isn't attached and they're still not connected to each other, that is a really, really solid installation. Good work. So now, after I've put the foot peg back on, we can go around the other side. And just as expected here, there's no clear access into that bottom bolt here on the sprocket guard. So it was definitely a good idea to have put the sprocket cover on before the engine bars. That could also, of course, prove a little bit problematic when it comes to changing the chain and sprockets, and we next need to take this off. It might mean taking off the engine bars at the same time, or it might just mean using an Allen key like this one with a ball head on it so you can come in at an angle. I guess we'll find out when that moment arises. So now we're here on the right-hand side, and here's our extra long bolt, which we poke through from the other side, and also there's the engine bar sticking across in front of the pipes there. At this point, what I'm gonna do, because once we've got this bar on, it'll be too late, is to slip this connecting piece onto that bar. Make sure the writing's the right way up. Yep, bolts down. Because once these two bars are next to each other, it's gonna be impossible to get that on. So it's making sure that that's in place before I go any further. So then, just like on the other side, we need to remove this engine mounting bolt. Once again, it's expectedly and reassuringly tight. So that's out. Keep hold of our washer, we're gonna need that. And then we can take our M10 bolt, the washer, slide that through the engine bar, stainless steel spacer on after that. It looks like aluminium, but turns out it's actually magnetic. And then like that, bit of thread lock on the bolt and send it home. And then before this gets any tighter, we need to stick our extra long spacer onto this extra long bolt like that. Doesn't want to go on there. <sighs> is not playing the game. So let's do it the same as on the other side. Start down there and then come up here. And weird how that works. And then 
No washers involved down here because this is a self-locking nut, which means I'm also gonna spare the thread lock. This one can be tightened down. Once again, 55 Newton meters. Click. And just as suspected, this one's just gonna spin round. I'm gonna have to come around this side, secure that with an Allen key, and then tighten from the other side. And there we go. And then finally, last job, this joining piece slides along so that both the bars are inside it and then using the little allen head bolts with the nylock nuts screw that in place and thankfully and cleverly see the nuts are actually captive into the casting there this is a metal piece so that we can tighten them up without having to get behind and hold the nuts still and also because they're nylock nuts they're going to hold themselves in place and hopefully not rattle loose. And that is that SW Motec crash bars fitted to my Yamaha FZ1N. And to be honest, I really don't think they look too bad at all. Not too conspicuous, don't really affect the look of the bike too much. Yeah. And ultimately, I've now got some places I can mount some cameras on for some interesting views. Yeah, happy with them. And also very happy with the idea now that if I were to ever lay the bike down, none of this stuff is gonna get scuffed, scratched, or broken. That makes me feel very happy. So once again, thanks so much for SW Motec for chucking these bars at me and thank you very much for watching. Ride safe, try not to test out your crash protection and I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!